Well, in some progressive Christian circles, talk of deconstructing evangelicalism or even Christianity itself is a growing topic. You've probably heard of it. But what often begins as questions at the margins of some denominational concern often ends at the crossroads for questioning the sufficiency of Scripture as a guiding light for our faith and for our lives. How did many Christians, even Christian leaders, find themselves in a position where proudly deconstructing their faith seemed tenable and it is celebrated in the media? And how should the rest of us respond? Well, joining me now to talk about this is Dr. Owen Strand, senior fellow with FRC Center for Biblical Worldview and author of Christianity and Wokeness, How the Social Justice Movement is Hijacking the Gospel and the Way to Stop It. Owen, welcome back to Washington Watch. Thank you so much, Tony. Great to be back with you. Let's start with definitions. I know the term deconstruction is used in various ways, but I want to talk about it from the standpoint of those who have used the term as they jettisoned biblical truth and became progressive evangelicals or even left the faith altogether, becoming agnostic or even atheist. So let's begin with definitions. Define it for us. Yeah, basically, when you talk about deconstruction, you begin with construction. And so according to Relevant Magazine and other sources that have written about this, with the construction phase, that's when you're building the tenets of your faith. You're coming to understand the core ideas and practices of Christianity. In the deconstruction phase, that is when you're challenging what you have been taught. So put positively by many deconstructionists, deconstruction is actually something good where you basically stop uh, just receiving what you have been taught in Sunday school and from your parents. And now you start to question it and ask what is really true. And then what emerges from this kind of synthetic process is an authentic faith that is stripped away of, uh, you know, Americanism and cosmopolitanism and uh, imperialism. And what results is a, is a faith that is really a, a tested faith that is still biblical, according to deconstructionists. We can debate that very much, uh, but nonetheless is not cultural in a harmful way. That's what deconstructionists say they are about. Okay. You're the professor, okay? I'm, I, I, and so you, you correct me, professor, if, if I'm wrong, but what I see of this current deconstructionist movement in the evangelical world at its core, is this not an attack on transcendent truth and the authoritative Word of God? It definitely is. That's the right way to understand it. And put the way it just was by yours very truly, deconstruction, according to relevant or other sources like that, can sound relatively harmless, like deconstruction is really just you trying to think for yourself about what really is true from Scripture. That doesn't sound that bad and wouldn't have to necessarily be that bad. What deconstruction often ends up being, though, is an on-ramp to leftism from both an evangelical uh, approach and a political approach. In other words, deconstruction gives you license to doubt the Christian faith, to doubt the Word of God, and to really turn your back on your parents' generation, in many cases, and the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ more broadly. That's how it ends up playing out. So deconstructionist authors are not really people who are trying to guide you into a more sure biblical faith. In so many case, cases, and case after case, they're the ones who are telling you much what the culture is telling you, but with a religious spin, that your parents' church isn't woke enough, that you're in, inherently a racist, uh, that you need to be less certain in your faith, that there are, at the very least, many different angles to Jesus, and many more people may be claiming Jesus uh, than, than you've been told. Uh, that we need to be more tolerant, that we need to be more fair. Really, what deconstruction ends up looking like is, as I say, an on-ramp to leftism. It, it, it's an attack right. on biblical authority and really the Christian faith itself. I mean, Paul, I mean, he says that we're to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. So this whole idea of, of taking the faith, analyzing it, looking at it, how our lives measure up to it. I mean, that's the process in which we are told to go through. So from a standpoint of their claimed underlying premise, I, I agree with. But 
I think the difference is the ultimate authority is not our feelings. Our ultimate authority is Scripture. And so we can't meld and, and bend Scripture to meet what we want to be the outcome. Rather, we have to allow our lives to be transformed to match the standard that God has set. Yeah, that's right. Basically, any church worth its salt is going to teach you that you need to not conform to yourself or to the world, but you need to conform to the Scripture and specifically to the image of Jesus Christ. So that's a good thing. That's a, that's a wonderful biblical pursuit. That's what every Christian is seeking to do by the grace of God in them. Deconstruction sounds similar, but what it actually executes is something quite different. It encourages you not so much to be conformed to the image of Christ, but to be conformed to the image of your own self-chosen faith. So you become the master of your faith. It encourages you to, be, to become the arbiter of what is true and what you think is best about the Christian faith. We should always be seeking to think about our lives and our beliefs in light of Scripture. Acts 17, 17, that's what the Bereans did. They heard of the apostles and considered them according to Scripture. That's biblical. Deconstruction is, is actually something very different. It's you taking uh, the, the imperatives of leftism and, and you making yourself the judge of your own faith, the arbiter of what you think is true. And that's what's pulling many young people in particular, Tony, away from the Christian faith. Deconstruction is not sound. Deconstruction will ultimately lead to destruction itself. Well, and the, the results of the deconstructionist movement is self-evident to what you just said, because, I mean, when you look at it, the, what we see happening, in fact, kind of the, the, what I have found to be the trigger, if you will, is where they cannot mesh these cultural holdings, such as same-sex marriage and LGBT. There's no compatibility with Scripture, so you've got to jettison that. Well, then we find all of a sudden hell's gone. Uh, then we move into this universalism. And then the ultimate path is being agnostic or atheist because there's nothing left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this movement often takes its cues from the LGBTQ revolution. And it starts students, in particular young people in high school and college, 20-somethings, on that path of thinking that their parents' church, I keep using that phrase, but it's, it's relevant here, has put them on the wrong path, a path of hatred and exclusionary intolerance. And the deconstructionists are, in truth, they say, offering our young people a way out of that world where they can truly accept the biblical God, who's a loving God, who accepts all people, who affirms all people, who doesn't judge anyone. W what we need to know is that this is just the uh, trappings of universalism in, in a new clothing uh, scheme. This mm -hmm. is this is new clothes for an old heresy. And so if you're in a church, if you're a father or mother hearing this program in some form, you need to know that the deconstructionists are after your children. It's either sound doctrine that is going to get our children by the grace of God, or it is liberal leftist uh, unbiblical garbage that is going to get our children. And we've seen one I mean, celebrity deconversion after another. I mean, it, it almost goes back to, to, the, to the New Testament church with Gnosticism, where there's this hidden knowledge that they discover outside the, the Word of God. All right, um, I, I don't like to talk about a problem unless we present a solution. And, and I would say mm -hmm. our culture is at an acute crisis moment. And this is not a time to panic. It's not a time to wring our hands. It's not a time to hide under the table. Uh, this is a time to take bold, decisive action. And I think the Bible lays it out very clearly for us. If we look at what, even in the Old Testament, where, where Moses, uh, leading the children of Israel into the Promised Land, repeatedly challenged and modeled for the parents what they were to do, and that was to teach their children. In fact, mm -hmm. I was discussing this with my, family, my kids yesterday at uh, Sunday dinner about we're to be consumed when you're sitting in the house, when you're walking in the way, when you're lying down, when you're rising up. We're to be consumed with teaching our children who God is, what he has done, and what he expects from us. And if we allow or think the public schools are going to do that, 
the entertainment industry is going to do that, or even our churches are going to do that, we're going to end up right where we are now with our children who are walking away from the faith in this deconstructionist movement. Yeah, exactly. Welcome to Ground Zero, where it can feel like there are very, very few partners left with us uh, who will help us, genuinely help us disciple and educate our children in the Christian faith. So what that means is exactly what you said. It means that every father and mother has to recommit themselves by the grace of God to this holy task. We must not think that public school educators or in some cases, Tony, even Christian school educators, Christian colleges, Christian universities, whatever it may be, are trustworthy and sound. Instead, we have to take our kids to the Word of God and put their feet on the solid rock of the Word of God because everything else is sinking sand. So that means that we've all got to redouble our efforts here. And then it means that we've got to search out a sound biblical church uh, as as much as we can and, and hopefully find one. And then we've got to point our kids to that sound ministry of the Word because there is not a lot of solid rock kind of uh, foundation left in our world. That's a bad thing. But as you say, rightly, that's also an opportunity. Here's the thing. The market for truth has never been higher. It's at a premium. So uh, those who teach their children, those who have a strong biblical ministry in a church or at at a parachurch organization or a Christian school, college, whatever it may be, they only stand out all the more. And so we should funnel our children and our funding and our prayers in the direction of those who are taking a stand for the word of God, because God is always going to bless that. And here's some good news. The cause of Jesus Christ is going to win. Yeah. And and when we're talking about that, we're not talking about this esoteric, um, you know, just academic view of the word of God. And all of that has its place, but it's the application of God's word to the world in which we live into our own lives. Uh, You know, Owen, you spend a lot of time, you're training up the next generation of leaders. What would you say to pastors and their role in this at this moment? Yeah, I would say just know how long the knives are that are out for the children in your congregation, in particular, those who are in high school and those who are in college and, and so on it goes. Know that whatever sense there may have been in years past of what sociologists call a neutral world in America, a kind of naked public square where everything's neutral. That's basically gone, at least in a lot of places in America. And so your ministry as a pastor is all the more vital, and you need to double down on equipping the next generation. It is zero hour for the next generation. Absolutely. This is not the time to hold back. This is a time for, for the shepherds, the pastors, to, to shepherd their flocks and protect them from the, the evils that are out there trying to destroy uh, our children, our families, and in even the faith, if they could. You're right, they can't, but they're going to give it their best shot. Dr. Yeah. Owen Strand, always great to talk with you. Thanks so much for uh, joining us today. Appreciate you, Tony. Thank you.